Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. And today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about the Ferrari F50 in 118 scale. It's part of the Ferrari 5, which also includes the 288 GTO, the F40, the Enzo, and the LaFerrari. So if you're collecting them, sooner or later you'll feel the need to add an F50 to your collection. And if you're collecting them in 118, you'll come across a plethora of options at varying price points. The high-end price segment consists of extremely limited production number sealed resin F50s made by companies like BBR or Looksmart that go for hundreds of euros. Then you have the Hot Wheels Elite, which is cheaper and, at the same time, the most expensive 118 die-cast F50 with opening parts, and probably for this reason also very hard to find. And then in the budget range you have three different manufacturers, namely Burago, Maisto, and the Baseline Hot Wheels. They cost roughly the same, but offer F50s with several key differences. And with that, I don't mean the different colors that they are available in, or whether they come as a coupe or a roadster. No, even among coupes of the same color, several key differences that I want to make you aware of in this video, so that you can make a more informed purchasing decision. I decided to make this video because a lot of the confusion stems from the fact that next to these three old manufacturers, we have a new re-release of the 118 F50 by Burago, but this is actually a re-release of the old Maisto casting from the 90s. Although keep in mind that this new re-release is only in the coupe form. So, if you're on the lookout for a 118 scale F50 convertible, then you have to get the old models. So, for the rest of this video, when I talk about this new release, or re-release, I will always refer to it as the New Burago slash Old Maisto. Because, you see, the old Burago F50 from the 90s looks different to this new Burago which is almost identical to the old Maisto, so I will always refer to that one as the old Burago. So by the end of this video, hopefully some of your confusion will have gone away and you can make the right choice. We'll start with the front of the models, and the picture that you're looking at here is of the old Burago from the 90s. Now compare this to the new Burago slash old Maisto. And you can see that the headlights of the new Burago slash old Maisto sit on a slightly raised platform, which also looks more like the real F50's headlights, as you can see in this picture. Whereas the headlights of the old Burago are all the way at the back, which is perhaps made more evident from this angle. And then you have the hood vents, or nostrils I guess, None of the budget diecast manufacturers managed to create a seamless casting here, and all of them were forced to add a separate piece which creates this panel gap. On the old Burago, you can see that the gap runs almost vertically, while on the new Burago slash old Maisto, it's more like a 45 degree angle. This is also the same on the Hot Wheels and Hot Wheels Elite which are based on this old Maisto that is now the new Burago. And then you have the indicators. On the old Burago, they are completely in an orange tint. On the new Burago slash old Maisto, they are two-tone. 
just like on the Hot Wheels. And in real life as well. You will notice though that the Hot Wheels uses a slightly clearer plastic for the indicators than the textured ones the new Burago slash old Maisto uses. Also, the Hot Wheels has one extra detail in the form of a little black dot on the front, which I believe is where the tow hook would be located on the real F50. On the old Burago, you can also see that the Ferrari logo is a little too big and out of proportion compared to the smaller ones on the new Burago slash old Maisto, as well as the Hot Wheels. Now moving on to the front trunk on the old Burago, you can first of all see that we have some horrible underspray on the inside of the hood, and then we have a radiator with individual chrome blades. And then you have like a battery and some chrome piping. On the new Burago slash old Maisto and the Hot Wheels, you have a black plastic radiator. And instead of the battery and chrome piping, you have Ferrari luggage. In this case, a handbag. Or half a handbag, I should say, because you can remove it, but it doesn't have a back. Let's move on to the side of the F50, and perhaps the biggest difference that you will immediately notice on the side is that the old Burago has no vent glass on the doors, while the new Burago slash old Maisto does have vent glass, just like the Hot Wheels does. Now let's talk about the rims, which are unique to the Ferrari F50, especially compared to its predecessor, the F40 which shared its star-shaped wheels with the 288 GTO from the 1980s. So, first off, the color. The rims on this new Burago slash old Maisto are matte silver in color. There's no shine to them. They have that brushed aluminum kind of look, which also is the closest to the real F50's rims. And that makes them different to the wheels of the old Burago F50, which were slightly shinier and more chrome-looking. Not too much, though, but yeah. However, there are two major, major differences that speak for this new Burago slash old Maisto casting rather than the old Burago. First, the center locks. This new Burago slash old Maisto actually has center locks, and it even has Ferrari logos on them. The old Made in Italy Buragos that everyone is praising, whether it was the Testarossa, the 288 GTO, the 456 GT, the F40, or the F50, did not have center locks on their wheels, meaning you could see the black pin of the wheel axle, and it was just a horrible sight. If you remember, on my review of both the Testarossa and the 456 GT, I covered up the holes with Ferrari logos I had gotten from my printer, and on the 288 GTO, I tried painting them in silver to make them stand out a little less. So the center locks with the prancing horses on them is the first major difference, and the second major difference is the fact that this new Burago slash old Maisto actually has brake discs. The old Burago did not have any brake discs at all, which is unacceptable at 118 scale, unless the car has some sort of dogdish rims where you can't see past the rim anyway. Unfortunately, on this new Burago slash old Maisto, there are no brake calipers, but you also get no brake calipers on the Hot Wheels and Hot Wheels Elite either. So, the cheapest 118-scale F50 that comes with brake calipers is the Koenig GT Spirit version, and of course the Luxmart and BBR beyond that. Now let's move on to the back of the F50, where there are more differences. We'll start off with the rear spoiler. The Hot Wheels actually has a separate crease here, which sucks, but on this new Burago slash old Maisto, the transition from the body to the spoiler is a lot more organic. 
And if you look further down, you will see that we also have a rear license plate that says F50. Now, moving back to the Hot Wheels, in fact, it's not just the F50 rear license plate sticker that you don't get on the Hot Wheels, but this entire chrome plate surrounding it is also not there. So even if you were to print an F50 sticker and stick it on your Hot Wheels to make up for the loss, it would still not be the same because this frame will be missing. Now, underneath the rear spoiler, you will notice that the new Burago slash Old Maisto just has a sticker that says Ferrari. But both the old Burago and the Hot Wheels have a separate piece here that is raised and says Ferrari. Now let's talk a little bit about the rear grille. Purely from a model car collector standpoint, I think it is great to see it perforated, rather than the completely closed mesh you get with modern castings in the budget segment these days. But you will soon notice that the individual slats and bars are quite thick. And you're absolutely right. Once you see a picture of the real Ferrari F50, you will be blown away by how much better the rear grille looks than this sorry excuse for a grille. Because the real grille is an extremely fine mesh, so fine in fact that from a distance it looks like tinted glass. You can see the engine through it, but it is a mesh. And then you return to this model and you feel so disappointed but you really have no budget alternative. Because the old Buraka model from the 1990s also has this same mesh, although it is in a diamond shape, like a diagonal crisscross, than the vertical and horizontal mesh of this new Burago slash old Maisto. The Hot Wheels also has the same mesh, although it is in the proper black color, instead of this really dark gray. And even the rare and expensive and hard-to-find Hot Wheels Elite has this exact same coarse mesh. You literally have to buy one of the high-end, sealed resin, extremely limited production number F50s made by Looksmart, and I believe BBR is also releasing one this year, to be able to have one with the proper-looking rear mesh. And there's also a 1.8 scale F50 by Amalgam, which goes for... Mm, around $12,000, but you know what, let's just return to reality. Actually, wait, there's also a 118 Koenig F50 by GT Spirit, which you can find for less than $150, and that one also has a nice and fine mesh. But you won't find any Ferrari logos on the model, as it is completely unbranded. Now, before we open the engine, let's take a look at the engine bay cover. The Hot Wheels and the new Burago slash Old Maisto both have a black trim around the rear engine bay cover, and that black trim is missing on the old Burago. But that's not the only difference. If we open the engine cover, you can see that the old Burago has a completely different looking engine. It looks pretty, but it isn't very accurate to the real car. And this sort of artistic license also extends to the interior. Here we're looking at the interior of the old Burago, and it has by far the prettiest and most detailed interior of all three manufacturers. You can see we have separate switches left of the steering wheel. We have more pronounced bolts around the center of the steering wheel. The window cranks are separate chrome pieces. The air condition vents are separate black plastic pieces. And in the footwells, we have separately carved chrome prancing horses. And we even have separate chrome bumps embedded into the door sills. Looks amazing. But Burago went a little overboard here because the interior of the real F50 doesn't have these details. So this is where you will find the interior of the new Burago slash old Maisto, as well as the Hot Wheels, to be quite similar to one another, but with one major difference. 
the Hot Wheels has the worst of all the interiors because it lacks the F50 logo on the right side of the dash where the passenger would sit. The new Burago slash Old Maisto has that logo, but is otherwise the exact same interior. And checking the bottom of the car, I gotta give credit where credit is due to vintage Burago though, because the old Burago had a much cooler base than this old Maisto slash new Burago does. The old made in Italy Burago had a ton of Ferrari Scuderia shields on the base, but this new Burago slash old Maisto's base looks pretty basic. <laughs> okay, so now that you have been shown all the differences, you might ask, why should I buy this new release if I can just get an old Maisto Ferrari F50 from the 90s? which also comes with branded tire walls. After all, they are the exact same model. Well, first of all, a brand new re-release means that the paint quality will be top-notch and you'd be hard-pressed to find even a mint condition 90s Maisto F50 to look just as fresh and new. But more importantly, some of the old 90s Maisto F50s suffered from a notorious underspray on these rear wheel arches. So you could actually see the metal shining through on those 90s Maistos here, and it looked horrible. You can see this on the F50 unboxing video of YouTuber SYF2000. This is why it's important to make sure the seller shows you pics of the engine bay opened, so you can make sure before buying whether your model will have its wheel arches properly painted or suffering from the underspray. Other batches of old Maisto F50s have a problem where the rubber of the tires has started to peel off. So in my opinion, losing the tire wall branding due to licensing issues is a small price to pay for the brand new and improved paint job you get with the re-release of the old Maisto F50 under the new Burago brand than buying the 90s Maisto, even though otherwise it's the same model. Now the old Hot Wheels does not suffer from underspray, and it has the tire wall branding as well. But it has its own set of problems, like these spring coils here, not being separate coils. A fellow diecast YouTuber, AC Collection, uploaded a video of a black Hot Wheels Ferrari F50, which did have spring coil suspension, that kinda surprised me. But for some inexplicable reason, the red F50 does not have real springs. So the springs on the Hot Wheels red F50 look horrible, and they obviously do not move. But the springs on the new Burago slash old Maisto Ferrari F50 is an actual working spring coil suspension. And what that means is if you press down on the wheel arches, the springs will actually move. Another problem with the Hot Wheels is you do not get an F50 logo on the passenger side dashboard, which I mentioned earlier. And also keep in mind that the Hot Wheels comes in a closed Ferrari box. Which looks nice but you can't see the model, so you cannot display it inside the box. But the new Burago box allows for displaying, and that to me is also an advantage that you should keep in mind. So I hope you can now make a more informed decision which manufacturer you want to get it from. And if you like these kind of comparisons, uh, please make sure to watch my comparison of the AutoArt versus Maisto Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera as well as a comparison of the various 118 scale Ferrari 599s that Hot Wheels has made, including the GTB, the XX, the XX Evo, and the GTO. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day, and this is Imperial Diecast, signing out. <laughs>